Hi, this is trustee Michael Glatz. This weekend, we surpassed the 60-day mark of Governor Pritzker's initial stay-at-home order. The people of Tinley Park, along with a majority of residents across the entire state, have by and large complied in full with the governor's executive orders. We did so at the expense of our constitutionally guaranteed rights and economic well-being. We did this because in times of crisis, we understand our role as citizens and the duties we owe to each other in the betterment of our village, our state, and our country. We were told day after day that the goal was to flatten the curve. And the victory would not require a complete eradication of the COVID-19 virus. The goal of flattening the curve was to make certain that healthcare system was not overwhelmed. We have achieved this and the healthcare system has been shielded. The governor's reopen Illinois plan has effectively created an unreachable finish line for us. Today, we join the litany of requests from elected officials from across the state to urge the governor to please re-examine your plan and allow industry experts and local municipalities to play a much larger role in how we reopen our state. This is village clerk, Kristen Therian. To be clear, we do not believe that our plea to the governor, nor those from our neighboring towns, can or should be labeled as reckless or a political stunt. Rather, we are simply asking the governor to make good on his commitment to be flexible in establishing and amending his executive orders. Working under the governor's own parameters, we feel that the businesses in Tinley Park are ready to open today. They can do so responsibly with common sense regulations and safeguards. Certainly the governor must consider more than Tinley Park or the Southland in his declarations and orders. However, in light of the data we are receiving on a daily basis, it's becoming clear that the reopening of Illinois will require the precision of a scalpel, whereas the governor is only equipped with a hammer. Our businesses simply cannot afford to remain closed until an unreachable goal is attained. We believe there are a number of steps the governor could take immediately, which would allow our Tinley Park businesses to reopen responsibly. First, commit the necessary resources to ensuring that our seniors and other vulnerable populations are adequately protected. According to the statistics compiled by the Illinois Department of Public Health, 48% of statewide deaths have occurred in assisted living facilities. There is perhaps no obligation we hold more dearly as elected officials than the protection of our seniors. Stricter isolation regulations for residents, guests, and employees of nursing homes that should have been enacted months ago must be put in place immediately. We must invest in local programs similar to the one residents Colleen Sullivan, Tim Janicek, Nancy O'Connor, and I spearheaded here in Tinley Park, whereby volunteers call each of our seniors to make sure they have all they need to shelter in place and perhaps, more importantly, that their neighbors will be there for them during these difficult times. The Tinley Park Citizen Volunteer Committee has helped well over 200 seniors so far. Second, we believe the governor should redraw the re regional map set forth in the Restore Illinois plan. As you all know by now, Restore Illinois plan groups the vast regions of the state into four districts for purposes of determining who can reopen and when they can reopen. The governor has yet to provide us with a compelling reason for this structure. Illinois stay at home regulations were in line with other states. Grouping our entire state into four regions is a drastic departure from states such as New York, which separated in its state into 10 regions, not to mention Wisconsin, whose Supreme Court found the governor's stay-at-home order was unconstitutional. To make the matter more confounding, the Illinois legislature has already split the region into 11 districts based on the availability of emergency medical resources. These regions, approved by medical experts across the state, accurately reflect our resources and demographics. We implore the governor to use these well-thought-out regions. 
We join the Illinois Municipal League and our colleagues in local government across the state in asking the governor to shorten the length of the review period between phases from 28 days to 14. If there is one silver lining to take from the past few months, it is the solace in knowing the extensive amount of incredibly talented and brave men and women we have in the healthcare field. They've continued to serve as our best defense against this virus. And in addition to caring for those of us who have fallen ill, they are delivering the data and the numbers in an incredibly quick fashion in order for elected officials to make real-time policy decisions. Every day that goes by where business remains shuttered vastly increases the likelihood that said business will never be able to open its doors again. That is the reality which we face and the decision-making process needs to occur as soon as possible. The people and businesses of Tinley Park have followed the governor's directives for the past 60 days without question. Their sacrifice has come at a great personal and financial expense. We now ask the governor to hear us on their behalf and allow them the opportunity to responsibly open. To that end, Kristen and I have been working with the business community on procedures and safeguards that I believe would allow our businesses to reopen and start our journey back to some type of normalcy. They are common sense sanitizing and distancing regulations to which our businesses and residents alike will gladly adhere to. It is imperative that we move forward with the same cooperative spirit that has gotten us to this point. Threats to withhold federal money from villages or liquor licenses from businesses that opened prior to the Reopen Illinois plan cannot be allowed to overshadow the extraordinary sacrifices our business community and residents have all endured in reaching our goal of flattening the curve. Each day, more lawsuits are filed, attacking the legitimacy of the governor's order. Instead of wasting resources litigating these matters, we ask the governor not to throw the scientific data to the wayside, but instead be flexible in applying that data to the state's policy. It is time to trust that those who have sacrificed for the greater good of our village, our state, and our country are capable of reopening responsibly. In closing, people are suffering and some are having trouble paying their bills and putting food on their table for their families. This cannot go on forever. If social distancing is working at big box stores, then why can't the same social distancing measures be safely applied to all businesses? In addition to relaxing restrictions on small businesses, we feel that a one size fits all set of restrictions isn't feasible for the entire state of Illinois. The coronavirus isn't affecting all parts of Illinois the same way. Thank you, and we are all in this together.